Hello and welcome to Mariners Monday. I'm Austin Rooney, and today I'm joined by Harwich Mariners shortstop Tanner Morris. Tanner Morris was a freshman this year at the University of Virginia. And Tanner, thanks so much for joining us this week. Thanks for having me. So you've had an outstanding season so far on Harwich, and we're going to get into that in a couple of minutes. But first, let's start all the way back in high school. You were the number one overall recruit out of the state of Virginia. Clearly, baseball was your best sport. I know you played a little bit of basketball in high school, too. At what point did you realize that you really wanted to focus on baseball? So I was in uh, my sophomore year, and basketball season was approaching. And I was weighing in at about 144 pounds, and I just committed to the University of Virginia. And I happened to go to a practice and I saw the guys. I actually got to see them in the weight room. And I realized that if I wanted to play at the University of Virginia, the biggest thing that I was going to have to do was not going to be about skill set. It was going to have to be about getting bigger. And uh, so I decided not to play basketball that year and I got in the weight room and got up to about 163 pounds. And then from there on, just continued to gain weight throughout my high school career. And so was there one person in your family or a specific coach that really helped you on that path to gaining weight and becoming a bigger? Yeah, there's a there's a facility in Charlottesville that's about 10 minutes from UVA called Teams Training Facility. And I used to go every day after school and uh, work out with a guy named Todd Proctor, who's actually my hitting hitting coach and strength coach from about uh, age uh, probably eight to, to now. And again, you grew up really close to the University of Virginia. You said just 20 minutes away from the university. Was going to UVA something you wanted to do your entire life? It absolutely was. Uh, actually, my uncle, uh, who still is in Charlotte, so he played at the University of Virginia. And uh, we've always been UVA fans. And it was nice for me to be able to go to the University of Virginia, stay home so my family and everybody could come uh, watch me play. You had a really good year there. You were able to acclimate to the ACC schedule really effectively. So how were you able to jump right into the ACC and play so well? No, I really think that has a lot to do with I, uh, when I moved to the Miller School of Almeral, the competition was a little better in high school, and I got to work with Coach Wagner there. and We, we went every day. And then also play, getting to, uh, the chance to play for the Evo Shield Canes was a big part of it, facing basically the top high school pitchers for, for two years really just set me up to, to have a good time in college baseball. And upon entering college baseball, you weren't the leadoff hitter immediately. That was Jake McCarthy, who played for the Harwich Mariners last season. But when he went down, you took right over and played the final 26 games of the season as the leadoff man. So what did it mean for you to be the leadoff hitter at Virginia, and how were you able to be comfortable in that role? Yeah, it actually took a little bit of time to get comfortable, but actually my senior year in high school, I got moved to the, to the leadoff spot. So I, I had done it a little bit before. Um, I, I think hitting in the leadoff spot is actually just like hitting anywhere else. You just got to get up in the batter's box and compete. Maybe that first at bat slightly different. You might want to take a few pitches, maybe work into a two-strike count. But for the most part, you're just like a, a regular hitter in the lineup. And so the change wasn't much uh, for me because – I treat it as just being any hitter in the lineup. And now transitioning over from Virginia to Harwich, there are a number of players at Virginia who were on the Harwich Mariners last season, just to name a few. As you mentioned earlier, Jake McCarthy, Justin Novak, Cam Simmons. So what did they tell you about your experience, what it would be like in Harwich? Uh, I didn't get to talk to him much about it, but when I did, they, they always mentioned Coach E as, having to, as making it really fun up here, and uh, I couldn't agree more with that. So, so it's lived up to your expectations? Yes. Yeah. Well, not only have you, of course, come up to Harwich here and you've been the leadoff hitter, but you've been excellent so far your time here. You've reached base in every single game you've played. So how has the transition been from ACC baseball to here in Harwich? So the biggest differences is now you have catchers calling games. There's no scouting reports is, is one of the big differences. And I'd say the velo up here is quite a bit harder than what even you see in the ACC. There's quite a few guys hitting 95, 96. A little bit better stuff up here. It's more important to attack pitchers early because you don't want to get in that 0-2, 1-2 count because they, they got good stuff to bury you. So you mentioned their good stuff. You mentioned the high velocity. How have you been able to adjust to those the differences here? Really, you keep the same swing, you got to shorten up, and uh, it's all about being on time and staying short to the ball. Well, I know you're going to have a pretty cool experience on Monday. You, along with the rest of the Mariners, will be headed over to Fenway Park. Have you ever been to Fenway? I've never been to Fenway. 
you won't, I guess, necessarily get to catch a game there for the first time, but you'll be able to take batting practice there, go through a number of events. It's pro day at Fenway Park on Monday, so if those of you who are unfamiliar, all the players will go through a number of events, and there'll be a number of scouts there, and they'll basically go through all these tests, and we'll see how they all are able to do. But during batting practice, are you going to try to hit one over the monster? Well, that's going to be opposite field for me, so... Uh... That's going to be a little tough. I, I think I'm just going to stay, try to stay in the middle of the field and try to hit base hits because home runs aren't my thing. <laughs> well, you've become an outstanding contact hitter over the past couple of years. Is there any specific player you model yourself after? Not only are you a contact hitter, but you're a left-handed hitting shortstop. There aren't that many of those. You know, recently I, I really like Francisco Lindor swing. It's kind of quiet, short path, and he, he wasn't a power guy at first, and he's kind of developed into more of a power guy in the last few years. Um, that, that's a swing that I really like in the major leagues right now. Now, there are a number of kids who are going to be listening to the podcast, and what would you recommend to them about not only becoming a better contact hitter, but also defensively in the field? What makes somebody a better shortstop, and what would you tell a younger kid to you know, become that better defensive fielder? I tell them to focus on the fundamentals and uh, get out to the field as much as possible and uh, really focus on the small details and making routine plays. The routine plays are the important ones. If you're able to make those, then you can, of course, advance and try to make the better plays when they come to you. And finally, the fans here in Harwich have gotten to know you on the field. What do you like to do off the field and what kind of person are you off the field, would you say? So I'm, I'm from a small town in Crozet. It's right in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Uh, actually, the house that, that I live in is up on top of a mountain, and there's an orchard that's right behind it. So growing up, I worked a lot on the orchard picking apples and peaches. And, uh, you know, since I'm in the mountains, a lot of time I'm out in the woods hunting and, and fishing and stuff like that is what I like to do in my off, off time. So what has that taught you, and how is that going to help you moving forward, do you think? Uh, well, you know, family and, and friends are really important to me. And for me, it's going to be important to stick with the people that have been with me from a young age. And that's kind of what that small town has really given me birth to, to stick with the same people that have been there all along. Well, thank you so much for joining us this week, Tanner. Thank you.